Hi guys, it's Alex here, back today with another emulation tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing Semu, uh, which is an emulator for the Wii U, and it's come on leaps and bounds, as you probably saw in my latest Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild gameplay showcase. And I definitely think it over to you guys to show you how to get this all up and running. It's actually quite nice and easy nowadays. So click Semu on Google, on Semu.info, the first link. Here are the system requirements, Windows 7 or above, OpenGL, RAM of 4GB but 8GB is recommended, and you will need the Microsoft Visual C++ 2017 redistributable package. It only supports NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, so internal Intel GPUs are not supported. Download the latest version, click save file, OK. We'll save it into your downloads. As you in the top corner, it's now downloaded as a zip folder. Head over to your start menu, click downloads, open up your downloads folder, and drag the semu zip onto your desktop. Once you've done that, right click, new folder, open semu 1.19, and drag the zip folder into the folder you just created. Open it up. Right click, 7-zip, extract here, you don't have 7-zip, I will link it down in the description below, as usual, you now delete your zip folder, and we'll now open up the semi folder, double click semi.exe, and we now have to set up the custom MLC01 path, so to do this we click browse, Head over to a storage drive, uh, so I'm going to use my 2 terabyte hard drive, make sure you have plenty of capacity on it. And then going to right click, new folder, and I'm going to name it emulation, no oh, sorry, I'm going to name it semi emulator back up, yep, I think I'll name it, name it that, I'm going to then right click again. Create folder, we're going to name it MLC01. Once we've done that, we're going to click double click to open the folder up and we'll click select folder. So it should read the drive names, the name of the folder, and MLC01. Right now, we need to head over to the game path folder. If you do not have any games installed for Simu currently, then I will leave a little bubble in the right hand side corner of this video, it will pop out on how to get games and download them for Semu Emulator. Uh, for everyone else though, this will carry on. So if you'd like to go watch that video, if you don't have any games, that will show you how to install them and then you can come back to this exact point in the emulator to continue setting it up. If you've already got games or you've already done that, then we will now click Browse and search for our game folder. Mine is in my documents. So I'm just going to head into my documents real quick. My games, Wii U games, data, emulators, Simu games, and here Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm now going to select the folder. As you can see, it's got my directory path right here, and we're going to download the community graphic packs. Wait for it to do that. Quite a quick process. Awesome. Click next. As you can see, it also has start games with full screen, open separate pad screen, and automatically check for updates. If you would like to select these options, feel free to do so. I'm going to currently leave them alone, but they are there if you wish to use them. Now let's configure the input device. So we've got the pad open here. Go to Emulate Controller, got Wii U Gamepad or Wii U Pro Controller. I recommend selecting one of these two. I'm going to select Pro Controller because I have an Xbox controller. Then go to your inputs. You have keyboard and mouse as input for Xbox. Uh, you've got these. DSU for DualShock Client for PlayStation controllers, and you can also plug in Wii Remote or GameCube if you have the wired versions and the correct software. I'm going to go with Zimbook because I have an Xbox controller. Then select Controller 1, and then you can map your corresponding buttons to what you would like on the controller to match. So just click and then click on your controller. As you can see, I'm going through them left, right bumper, Z axis, start, select. 
up, down, left, right, and quickly just fill them in. You can uh, copy exactly what I'm doing if you'd like, but everyone has their different custom setups they like to use. Once you're done, you can name your profile. So I'm going to call it Xbox Controller, and then just remember to click Save. And as you can see, profile is now saved, and you can exit out. Okay, now that you've done that, let's maximize your semi. And here's your game. As you see, I've got Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So if you've got your games in here, and the first thing you want to do is learn how to update our game if it has an update, and also how to install DLC for our games. As you can see here, I'm currently version zero, and I currently have no DLC installed. So what you're going to do is click File, click Install Game Update or DLC. You will then want to navigate to your games folder. So once again, Head back to my other video if you want to learn, to learn how to download your games and where to get your games from. I'm going to look for update first, so Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild update. It is the middle one, so I'm going to click that one. And we're going to click open. We're going to go into the meta folder. We're going to click meta.xml and we're going to click open. Once we've done that, we'll start installing the update. And I'll quickly speed this up for you guys so I can show you how to install the DLC. Okay, the update is successfully installed. We're going to click OK. As you can see, version now says 2.08 for Legends of Breath of the Wild. So there'll always be a number for the update of the game you're choosing. Let's go File, Install again. And we're now going to go install your DLC content. It's the exact same process. Head back to your game folder, find your update folder. So Legend of Breath of the Wild update, that's my game folder, top one, click that. You can always double check by hovering over it, remember that. Go into the meta folder once again, click the meta.xml file and click open. Once you've done that, it will start installing the DLC. And once again, I'll speed this up and then we'll jump into the game settings section. Okay, now that we've downloaded the DLC and got the update for your game, let's head over to the Options tab. Let's click on General Settings. Uh, you can leave most of this the same, the language here, and there's some small tick boxes here. Choose the ones you want. I'm going to put these on. You can decide if you want to do that as well. We also have your MLC path. You can change at any time. As you can see, directory is here, and you can also change your game path. So let's over to the graphics tab. Now the graphics API that's OpenGL, this only works with NVIDIA GPUs and offers the highest performance. However, I do recommend Vulkan, which works if you're using AMD card, you have to use Vulkan. And if you're an NVIDIA user, I recommend trying out Vulkan because of the new async feature I show you later. Here's your graphics device. You can leave VSync off. Preconciled shaders can stay auto. Now this needs changing. You can put overlays on if you'd like, but I'm going, not going to do that. So let's head over to the audio tab. Let's change to X Audio 2. We have the primary sound driver, that's fine. I'm going to change mine to surround. The volume 50% is absolutely fine. And gameplay. I actually recommend putting it on primary uh, sound device if you want it on the controller as well. And put it to 50%, but I've left mine disabled because I'm not too bothered. There's your account. You can create a little account for your brother or sisters, or if you have a friend who's using the same computer, you just click create, put in a me name, so I'm gonna call this little bro. Click OK. As you can see, I now have two accounts and two profiles for saved games. D pad uh, is nothing, just close out of that. And we'll then want to head over to the debug tab at the top of the screen. And this is where we're going to click on experimentable and we have the new feature async compile for Vulkan API only. This does not work for OpenGL. Remember that. Uh, this async feature basically gets rid of having to build your own shader cache or download someone else's shader cache and it completely eliminates stuttering. It's honestly a game changer and is why I recommend even NVIDIA users maybe take slightly less performance and use the Vulkan API so that they can get this feature. It really is a game changer and I recommend you all turn it on. Uh, just to make sure you all know, it only runs on the latest AMD drivers and NVIDIA drivers. I'll leave some text on the screen to show you which ones are supported. I know for AMD it's 20.3.1 and above. 
but I also leave the Nvidia on the screen to show you which drivers support it on there as well, but it's the most latest ones. Once you've done that, make sure to click on it to tick it on. And once it's ticked on, head over to the debug tab again, go on experimental and it should have a tick next to it there. Okay, now that we've got all your general settings set up, we want to set up your game settings to get it running at the highest frame rate possible and with the best graphics. So find your game. I'm going to use Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for this example because it's popular on the emulator and the most updated. I click on edit game profile and we're going to have CPU mode here. Now I'm going to leave on the screen the exact uh, how many cores and threads you need for each corresponding thing to get optimal performance. I'm personally using a 3700X which has 8 cores, 16 threads, so I'm going to select triple core. But you know, make sure you match up your CPU cores and threads to the ones I put on the screen so you can select the right mode. Then you want to go on your thread quantum and you want to select 100,000 cycles. Once you've done that, you can head to the graphic tab. Nothing needs changing here. And there's nothing needs changing in the controller, but you can set up profiles there. Exit out, right click, and we'll take edit graphics packs. And we're going to open up enhancements, graphics, mods, and workarounds. But first, download the latest community graphic packs. If it had a white screen, it should now show up. We'll open them up. There we go. I recommend having clarity on for enhancements. I leave it on Surfrost preset, but there's plenty of presets so you can mess around with them if you would like to see which is your favorite. I then recommend not turning any of these uh, features on because they're a bit buggy. Uh, now we're going to select resolution, change it to the resolution of your monitor or TV you're currently using. I'm using a 1440p monitor, so I'm going to select it to 1440p. I have a 1080p there, as you can see, and there's tons of custom resolutions if you want to use 4K and stuff like that. Uh, I also recommend turning shadow resolution on. I recommend keeping it on medium. Because the higher you go, the more unstable the game becomes. You can try high if you like, but I recommend keeping medium on. Do not use anti-aliasing, it creates a lot of graphical uh, errors. And we want to go into the FPS here. So here are some uh, other options if you want to have no hard stuff like that. But I'm going to open up the TAD, and you want to select each and every single one of these and turn them on. Will greatly improve performance and if you want to get 60 fps you need it now on the set limit fps i recommend keeping it on 60 fps and no higher they also have 30 40 20 33 48 uh, i recommend all of these if you're maybe struggling to hit the 60 mark you can always lock it to a smooth frame like that but i would never recommend going above 60 as it can start causing a lot of uh difficulties and issues within the engine itself because it was never really built to run above 30. So once you have that selected, head down to workarounds. Do not use the static FPS mod as you've just turned on all the F other FPS plus plus. Once you've done that, go to workarounds and here we have, as you can see, two Vulkan ones and two OpenGL. If you have an NVIDIA card and using the OpenGL A API on the general settings, then tick these two. If you're not, untick them, and you're using Vulkan either on NVIDIA or an AMD card, and make sure these two are also selected. You do not need the Intel GPU shadows as well, but uh, like I said, depending on what uh, sort of hardware you are currently using. Once you've done that, you can close out, and now all we have left to do is run the game, and I'll do that quickly, and we'll be done with the guide. Okay, let's launch the game. It's loading. Stop. I'm going to click on options in a minute to launch it in the screen. So let's quickly do that. Full screen. Awesome. And hopefully you guys are all at this stage now. So if this video helps you, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to subscribe to me if you want more emulation content. I'm going to do plenty of semi videos, but I'm also going to be doing some. PCSX2 and some, maybe some more RPCS3 with some Yuzu in the future. So if you'd like that content, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment down below any video ideas you would like to see, and cheers guys, Alex out, I'm just going to leave you with the rest of the gameplay.